What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terrence? Good old retrospective humor. Retrospective, uh, retrospective. Yeah. You, you're talking about just this past week. You're gonna, you're gonna deep dive deep into this past week, is it, Terence? No lah, no need lah. But, but we're, we're not going back days. We're not going back weeks. We're not going back months. We're going back years. Yeah, it's years. Three years. Three years since uh the start of or the the since the early days of COVID lah, which is what our first mm. topic is mm. about. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I can't believe it's three years now. Three years, I know. Fucking years. Yeah, three uh, crazy, crazy, crazy years, like right for. Yeah, we for were everyone. almost different people back then. We were, we were, yeah, and uh, you know, like I think you weren't married at that point. You know, I've I've had you two kids a father. since then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's just been yeah, it's been a crazy, crazy few years, like. But that's why it's it's so uh, interesting that we suddenly uh, you know we have this opportunity to take stock and look back at the last three years like, right mm, exactly mm. exactly yeah. so so uh, i mean we will be jumping into that with the the covid white paper but before that mm. what is something else yes. that we want to revisit from three years ago terence yeah we said this is maybe the retrospective episode but it's because we are we ourselves are in the process of taking stock and looking back at what happened to us the last three years like. And specifically mm. with something that, you know, weighed very heavily on our minds uh, alongside COVID-19 and everything about it. And that was yeah. our first ever TV series. She's a terrorist and I love her. Uh, you know, it's a, I think we've teased it here and there about it. And and we talked about, you know, a little bit about why you can't watch it. But Harish, what are we finally doing after these three long years? So, at the end of this month, or in the coming weeks, we are finally going to share the story of what happened, what went down, why people haven't been able to watch the show, uh, and also there's a there's a little twist at the end, um, mm. which we will announce in the coming weeks, and yeah. and how, Terrence, should people keep track of these announcements we're going to make? Um, I think like any good uh, millennial or Gen Z, <laughs> what you need to do is follow us on Instagram and not the yellow but Instagram if you're listening to this already. I think the Ministry of Funny Instagram is where it's at because that's the OG, our OG Instagram account for all our you know TV productions, everything that we've done for YouTube. So there's a lot, going to be a lot of activity there in the coming few weeks. So do, yeah. do follow us there. Yeah. And I think if you ever had a question about the show, everything will be answered. Mm, for mm, sure yes. okay so so yeah so so we're super excited and and we'll also be talking making a few more announcements on this podcast as well uh. yeah yeah cool That's man right. oh exciting times ahead cool sweet yeah all right uh, but yeah speaking of looking back here here we are what are we yes. talking about first man uh we are talking about the covid white paper which the mm. government released uh on 8th mm. march so this past week two days ago on wednesday 8th march um yeah. it's like a 90 page, 90, 86 page document um, mm. that talks about what like we, our government did well as a whole during COVID, through, during the whole yeah. management and also what they didn't do so well uh, and mm. a bit on what we are doing going forward. Mm. So mm, that's right. So did you know or not this white paper is coming out? No, man. It caught me off guard. Uh, all mm. I merely saw was Lawrence Wong giving like uh, those doorstep interviews about it. Mm. And, you know, my, yeah, I guess maybe I spent too much time on the internet, like, but my first thought was like, ah, presidential election must be coming. So Lawrence Wong must be, you know, finding another, uh, another opportunity to pat himself on the back for a job well done, steering Singapore through COVID. That was the cynical oh, me talking. Terrence, <laughs> why is so cynical? I know, I know, I know. But, 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 you know, as we will discuss, uh, I think, you know, that, that perception is very shallow and, and doesn't give credit where credit's due. So, like, so that was mm. what I thought. But how about you? Um, so I I didn't know that this white paper was coming out. This action after action review was coming out. Um, even though when I when I during while we were researching uh, last May itself, they did announce that mm. there will be a review of the government's response uh, and who is leading it and what it's focusing on. But yeah, I had no idea this was coming. Um, mm. And and likewise, I was I, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised to hear that it will be debated in Parliament. And I think that's when mm. I'm going to make my parliamentary debut. I don't know when mm. it is, 
But I want to go and watch that uh, because I mm. think it will be interesting. La. So so when this came out, I was like, okay, then the cynical side of me was like, okay, so yeah, la, like it's going to be like a pat on the back and all that. And how how mm. substantial would it be? La? But it is mm. quite substantial, man. It yeah, is. Yeah. And beyond substantial, I think... Uh, the tone of the white paper, if you read it, mm. uh, it might surprise you, uh, the the kind of, uh, they, not only what talking about what they did right, but what they did wrong. I think that was something that I f- was very unexpected for me, that, uh, you know, very honest admissions of, of what didn't go so well. Hey, but one thing, uh, one thing that, I, that really irked me about the white paper, right? Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if you, you accessed it, but I accessed it as a PDF, right? Yeah. And one thing too. that irked me was like, all the, the pages, the formatting is different. Uh. Some of them were like, you know, single column text, uh, right? You know, with pictures. Uh-huh. And then some of them were those double column, like newspaper column kind of things. And then some of them, the page literally rotated 90 degrees and then were, were diagrams and pictures and all. That for me on like trying to read on my phone, I was constantly having to zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if you had that issue, uh, but it, it, it irritated the heck out of me. Uh. No, so I had that issue initially on my phone. Then I was like, okay, fuck it. I'm just going to uh, look at it on my desktop. Oh, okay, so okay, then okay. it made yeah. things a lot easier. Uh, but see, I, see. I also will say that for me, the pet peeve was not so much the formatting. It was uh, like graphics. Like, like, I feel like I'm uh, reading like a primary school textbook. No? Uh, that, that's, that's because we're old. Uh, we're old. That's why for us, it's like, oh, it needs to be text. And then like... Yeah, very pictures. colorful and all that, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cannot <laughs> yeah. Be. No, no. I, seen, I, seen, I think for us, we don't like graphics because... We've always seen graphics as a like a, yeah a younger thing like, right? No, no. Actually, I think you can be have stylistic uh graphics and all that. Uh, uh, um, yeah. and I mean like I like looking. Okay, so when you go to restaurants, right? One of my yeah. pet peeves is like when the restaurant menu doesn't have pictures of the food. Mm. I fucking hate that. Mm. No? Uh, like just okay, okay. just put pictures. And I know some of the more atas ones when they say like I don't know what they say also. Um, mm. they don't put pictures, but I love menus with pictures. Mm. I just love mm. menus with pictures. Mm. So you also you also cannot stand having to cook your own food, like, right? That's the other know, pet peeve. Or oh yeah, yeah, correct. If I go to a restaurant, <laughs> I cannot stand having to cook my own food. And since you are uh, on a pet peeve, uh, I have yes, a hat yes. trick of pet peeves. Another one is when you order the food. Why do restaurants take the menu away? Uh? Like why? Yeah, yeah. It's for for so that other people can use it, Harish. It's but called sharing. No. No, it's no, no, no. sharing. I've I've looked at all these menus all over the place, and there's always more menus than there are tables or like enough. Mm, mm. So why not just leave the menu there to make it easier for someone to just order something? So mm. yeah, I don't I don't understand. I don't understand. But maybe, yeah, so yeah, maybe there just aren't enough menus, Harish. There are just aren't enough menus that you can't just cling on to one for your dear life. <laughs> then, then like, you need to share, Harish. You need to print share. Print more menus. Print more menus. <laughs> print more menus. It's something that would make it so much easier to buy your next dish or just add on to the bill, lah. Because no, you have no, to ask no, for a menu and all that. No, a lot of menus are QR code menus, really, right? True, lah. So, true, 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 true. Uh, so, so yeah. So I'm sure with the QR code, because it's a lot more accessible, the order rate yeah. probably is a bit higher than there would be if there were just a limited supply of paper menus. Correct, but, correct, correct. But yeah. I think the the nice, you, you from what we just said, uh, I guess it's it's nice that our main pet peeve mm. seems to be the, the visuals of it. Yours is the formatting. formatting. Yeah. Mine is the no, fucking primary school graphics. Oh, to your point, to your point about the graphics, right? Uh, a lot of times, I think, uh, just to add, when they were showing roadmaps of what was happening, right? You know, the different yeah. phases. Uh, the, the roadmaps, I don't know, maybe because I'm, again, because I'm, I'm older and all, it, they didn't really, they, they, I guess they were meant to go from left to right, like, right? Yeah. You know? uh, but a lot of times, because the roadmaps, like, went around the page, up and down and everything, right? I kind of sometimes I would just lose track of where I was, you know. <laughs> too, and then I, like, I have to trace, I have to trace the road to see. It's almost like you're playing snakes and ladders or something. And you have to trace the road. Oh, okay, this was the next phase. Ah, then you go up again, then you down. So I was like a bit. At some points, I was like, eh, oh, I got the. I, I'm looking at the wrong uh, place to start for the timeline, you know. <laughs> yeah, me yeah. too. Same, same for me. And then yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. as you said it, I just realized that the graphic of the roadmap is literally a road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's literally a road. I'm like, wow, mm. wow, okay. Mm. Yes. But yes, graphics aside, <laughs> just I, mean, I mean, it's important, right? You want people to read it's it. Important. These yeah, things yeah. matter. These things matter. Yeah, it's Don't important. It's it. important. Yeah. I just noticed the two column, one column thing also that it alternates. Yeah, yeah. For me, for me on my phone, it was like, oh, I've, I wanted to read. I wanted to read like you know landscape, and then after that, oh wait, I have to zoom you in. Have to and flip I have to zoom out. Yeah, flip, flip, flip. Yeah, it was nonstop. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, Did we just spend like our, five minutes that, complaining about the PDF? That's our conclusion on how the, the report... Of oh, COVID-19. Yeah. I look back on COVID-19. COVID-19. We complain about the PDF. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. If you can look past the graphics and mm. the formatting, mm. um, the, it was it was broadly split into yeah two two things la, like the, the things that were done well, the things that were not done well. So so maybe just like I'll I'll just speed through it. Like we yep, won't yep. we won't go down in detail because you can look. There's so many articles written about it. But mm. what we what we did well according to the report was the healthcare system, the healthcare capacity. You know, ramping up the national vaccination. Uh, getting early access to the vaccines and then rolling out the vaccination centers, um, the food and medical supply uh, resources like shops and all were still kept open. Mm. Um, the livelihoods were supported through grants and disbursements. Um, mm. The vulnerable were supported. There was financial support for those in need, mental health support for those in distress. They kept education going, uh, even though it was home-based learning, but, but that didn't mm. stop. They maintained high public trust um, uh, through the MTF press conferences and all that. And these are big mm. summaries. Like if you look at a document, mm, each mm, of these mm. points have like a few pages dedicated to it. And then the last point, the eighth point, is that they rallied the nation um, mm. and and brought the community together. Um, so what they could have done better was number one, the outbreak in migrant worker dormitories and how mm. that could have been done a lot better. Um, the border measures. The closing and opening and closing of the international borders, the mask mm. wearers, wearing policy about how initially they said no need, then they said need, then they took very long to remove it. Contact mm. tracing um, about the adoption, the rate of how people were using, and also the acknowledgement that in parliament there was a setback like, where it was disclosed that it will be used for police investigations. Uh, mm. The safe management measures where sometimes they were overly calibrated and mm. the transition to endemicity, which is where, where we are now, tran- mm. tran- transitioning to an endemic where it is part of our world. Yep. Um, yep. So, so that was like, um, I mean, like, like you also, I also was surprised that they were that specific and, mm. and outward about oh, the things that they didn't do well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. I, I guess, uh, yeah, just going back to the earlier point I was talking about, why I, I thought that this was an opportunity for Lawrence Wong to pat himself on his back or so, like, right? Because mm. I think for me, my perception is that internationally, at least the perception internationally, like, is that Singapore did, did pretty well, like, right? In the COVID-19 mm. management response and everything. And um, if anything, if you recall, like really Lawrence Wong was not DPM Lawrence Wong, leader of the 4G at the start of the COVID pandemic, like, right? And it was yeah. really through his his communication skills and everything on the MTF, uh, MMTF and, and all that that really propelled him to the forefront, I think, in people's minds about uh, who could be the next leader. So mm. if you think about that, right, like uh, it, it's like anybody, it's like when you watch those videos of like, I don't know, old school legends like Eric Cantona reflects on his time at Manchester United or reacts to his old goals or whatever he did, that kind of thing. Um, in spite of uh yeah, whatever you think about the person, you just when when they look back on the when they look back at things you've you've done and all, uh, there's a chance to almost um uh you can lionize yourself, right? You can sort sort of talk about mm-hmm. oh, you know what struggles I went through to overcome this and all. Um so yeah, that's why I thought, oh, that's what's gonna happen here. It's just a chance for him to lionize himself. But actually, um yeah like i mentioned uh like and you went through all the different things that they said they did yeah that, that yeah. we didn't do so well uh. so that was actually a lot of things that they actually listed that we didn't do well even more so than i i could have like come up with myself uh. and and that's where i was quite surprised by everything but for you of all the points that they said singapore did well and 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 all like um what stood out to you uh, uh i think like like certain things when I read what they did well, yeah, I completely uh, agree also. Like, like the vaccination, you know, like mm. we we on different times on different episodes, we both said that, oh shit, we went to get vaccinated and the process was really damn smooth. Like, and, it, and it felt, wow, we are in this together. You go there, you know, you see people of all races, shapes, sizes, mm. all just working together, a lot of volunteers. So yeah, and like, like um, about the places staying open, the 
uh the general I, I would say community spirit i do recall mm. that like, i do recall mm. like oh shit we're all in this together and and there was that sort of feeling like. mm. uh the things that could have done better yeah the the outbreak in migrant worker dormitories i'm glad that was like number one mm. um the thing about the contact tracing like i didn't know that the adoption of trace together was actually considered slow i thought it was fucking mm. fast mm. Mm. yeah and yeah. and the the thing about acknowledging that there was a setback, of course, that one, it just was like one or two paragraphs. Mm. And I know that will be debated in parliament for show. Yeah. Um, yeah. For, uh, sh- for, for sure, show for or sure. for sure? <laughs> I mean, Very I was going to say for show, you know, like when yeah, you spell yeah. it like S-H-O for slang, but then I yeah. realized like, oh, fuck, it sounds like for a theatrical show. No, no, yeah. for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, everything else... Um, felt like oh okay like i've heard this being discussed before but what about mm. you uh? um yeah i think the one that, that really stood out to me where the fact that they even admitted that that was a mistake was about the mask wearing where essentially mm. they said that they should not have been so definitive in uh you know whether masks were required and all that lah. and yeah lah, you could you could understand if you bring yourself back to those early days of covid there was a lot of confusion about whether mask wearing was effective right um and, yeah. and i think there was also a mask shortage going on at that point in time so uh, maybe in trying to to manage the supply and manage demand and all they you know they they almost like made a very definitive statement that the science says that you don't need to wear a mask unless you're sick and everything like right and then now three years later we look back like actually if you wore masks that would have helped a lot like right and 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 We've all sort of gotten to this stage. Like, oh, if you need to wear a mask, even you go, you know, take public transport hospital, okay lah, just wear a mask lah, right? No, no mm-hmm. biggity. And, and actually, it's, it's, you think about it, like, there are a lot of countries that, uh, like Japan and, and all that already were practicing that lah. Like, if you're sick, please wear a mask lah, right? Yeah. So, yeah. was there a need to, to almost like, uh, be so, be so firm that, oh, you don't need to wear a mask now, in spite, in spite of the fact that we didn't really know what was happening and all? Maybe not lah. If people wanted to be more precautious and and all, let them be also lah. And and mm. so for them to admit that that was a mistake and it's purely a mistake in the messaging lah, right? If anything, uh, yeah. that to me was like wow. I would not have expected uh Lawrence Wong and team to admit that as a mistake lah. Yeah. Mm. I see. I see. Because I know you you have very strong thoughts about the mass lah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. Uh, as in as in, I think I I generally was. Uh, during that whole period, because uh, you know, my wife was pregnant, and 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 then after that, had the kid and infant and everything, so yeah, generally I was very, uh, I think definitely more conservative about the mask wearing stuff, lah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I mean, turns out like the the report, uh, it was chaired by uh Peter Ho, who is the mm. former civil service head, um, mm. and I mean, so generally to be honest, like when I read it, I was like, oh shit, I actually think like. This deserves credit, mm, um, mm. and and I think as much as we can be critical and all, I think this one, the uh, this report deserves credit. Um, mm. The fact that it went to that extent and the fact that it is going to be debated in parliament is great, like Because I was trying to look for which other countries have also done after action reviews or COVID reports, and it's a bit hard to find. But I did find mm. in the Today article, um, the the there was someone was quoted. I mean, they mentioned that in the UK apparently the. The health authority there has appealed against an order by the country's information office to publish mm. its after action review. So basically, mm. they they are saying don't release this because there are topics that can be emotionally and politically evocative. Trigger warning. So yeah, so so that's where I was like, oh, okay, this this is interesting and it is quite substantial mm-hmm. and. I think if anyone wants to criticize and just say, oh, you never talk about this, just go read the paper first. The, the, yeah. the one thing that I did see people point out is that, oh, there's no mention of like the election happening mm-hmm. um, during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't know whether there was any, there was a super, uh, what's, what was that event called last time? Super spreader event or something. Oh, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, clusters. But I also, yeah. I also feel just, just off the top of my head, I don't know where that would sit under. Because mm. was it a good thing? Was it a yeah. bad thing? They, they did mention uh, in the timeline. Uh, in the timeline of what was yeah, happening. Yeah, in the timeline they yeah, did. They like, just yeah, mentioned yeah. that the elections happened. Uh, but another thing that I, I, I did uh, wanted want to point out to you specifically was also mm. one of, in one of the mistakes, or at least like when they said that things they could have done better. Uh, I think it's very ref, uh, relevant to you, right? They talked about Where how... 
yeah, weddings basically during the how the a lot of the you know the uh, SMMs uh, which are mm-hmm. safety management measures lah, right were overly calibrated, uh, which meant that they had to be changed frequently in response to the evolving situation lah. So essentially, they were saying that maybe they were too um, almost too specific with certain uh, with certain things, especially like then they raised the example of weddings lah, right. Where, yeah, yeah. you know, oh, you could have how many guests, you can't have this, then you must have this test before you go, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and given that weddings are such a, it's an emotional minefield for a lot of people. I mean, yourself included, yeah. you know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. They, that caused a lot <laughs> of emotional, uh, and, and they, they, they acknowledge, they even said, yeah, it's a very, uh, very complicated, emotionally affecting journey la, for those, those people affected. La. So, mm. do, do you recall like, like how, how difficult it was for you, in the planning process? Uh, I think where where it kind of made things a bit difficult was because we started planning in January 2022 and then we were we had got a location based on the number they could afford at that point in time which I think was like 90 or something because of the restrictions mm. um, which which actually for us like I never wanted like a big wedding and neither did my did my wife but the issue was when things started opening up right because our wedding mm. was in December right then the expectations of family also started opening up. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, but there's no restrictions. Why can't you invite this person? Why can't you invite that person? They were like, uh, uh, no, no. So it didn't impact us to the extent that I had no other couples were impacted. I remember walking past like some restaurant and I saw, yeah, just, you know, tables of five. You can't even mm. mingle across other tables. Yeah. Then I'm like, oh shit, weddings are not yeah. cheap. Um, and then of course we have the people in the influencer space who kinda, kinda, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Kinda, right. kinda got in trouble for all that sort of mingling, right? So yeah. yeah, for me it was more like when it opened up, then there were more issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but that's that's to do, I guess, with like, uh, yeah, it, the the measures were so like calibrated, lah, like, right? And so specific, yeah, yeah. as opposed yeah. to just saying don't do it or, or you you can do it, you know. So yeah, it just. Yeah created this a lot of uh changes that that people like you had to adapt to la, and, and mm, yeah it affected correct, your emotions there was a lot of adapting. So, yeah, yeah they, was a lot the, of the, the good thing is white people didn't just say suck it up harish you know like that's what happens they said that yeah they acknowledged that it was a very emotionally rough ride la, for for everyone involved yeah and plus i mm. sucked it up already <laughs> i sucked it all up <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> But um, yeah. What what else about the language? You think uh, because I, I, I mean, essentially, where we're get what we're getting is, uh, I think everyone should try to read this paper, even though yeah. it's like ninety pages. You know, just take a look at it, and you might be quite surprised by uh the tone and the language in it, lah. Which I was. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. So what what else for you also make it made it like oh you should read this, lah. Um, I think because okay, so one big thing like last time when I worked in the corporate and like even in our our company now, which is a, a small company, we do sometimes we do often okay, we have to plan this, we have to plan that. But the tricky thing is always what is the next step, lah? Mm-hmm. Because you can talk all you want, oh, you did this, you did that. What is the next step? And I mean, they mm-hmm. even they even spoke a bit about that. Like uh, there are like seven different things. Um, and they're also gonna be uh um forming like a a program to prepare for the next pandemic. Mm. So, and, and there was one thing also in Lawrence Wong's uh, speeches, if you see some of the clips online, um, first of all, like, the clips online, you know, they record, there's like the soft focus in the background with the plants. Mm. I thought, hey, shit, this looks quite nice cinematically, man. As mm. opposed to like, mm. just in a small room or something. Like. But even in his language, he said that, you know, um, for the next pandemic and all, which I thought, okay, like, um, I actually felt that was a good way of of just being very realistic about it. Lah. And mm. even in the report, they say there's a program for research in epidemic preparedness and response, mm. uh, which will be formed, which will pursue research efforts to prepare for future pandemics. Mm. So it's not even mm. saying this will not happen again. Yeah. It is, yeah. this will happen again. And we got yeah. to make sure we are, we are prepared. Lah. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 Cynical side of me, like uh, when I there was one line la, in the preface that mm. I read, that the cynical side of me wanted to stand up and just start and start uh, reciting the pledge. Uh, the moment I read that, mm. and um, it was actually the last line of the preface, which I, I you know it's people a lot of people don't even bother read the preface, la, right? But I think the language there was um, it was not so much about it didn't feel like a motherhood uh, kind of like uh, statement. It was like may this report help those who will be dealing with the next pandemic to avoid some of the errors we made and improve on what we have done this time 
in order to protect the lives and livelihoods of Singaporeans. So mm. if you think about this report, it's not it's almost like a time capsule, right? That they're trying to preserve. Uh they're, mm. they're trying to preserve like um the lessons they learned, the mistakes they made, and to give it to people of the next generation to read. Because the the truth is when you when I read this, right, I was like, oh yeah, fuck. There were so many things that were going on at, at, at the planning level. But us on the ground, like, you know, all those months of like just sitting at home waiting for updates or uncertainty about, you know, whether I can get toilet paper for my mm. uh, my next supermarket run. All those things, uh, unfortunately, you know, won't be uh, very hard to get captured in a white paper like this. But, you know, um, maybe in our own ways, like, uh, you know, shameless plug, like things like our folklory and all that, right? Uh, mm. We allow people to, to to capture like a time capsule of how they were in life. Like, and, and, and even for listeners of this podcast, a lot of them are saying that the way we talk about stuff going on with COVID was a very, was very, uh, not, not, not hard thing, but actually quite chilling, right? How, mm. how complacent we were about certain things and all. But that's all part of the record of how we as a species dealt with, uh, you know, something that like that, we never dealt with before. And so when I read that mm. line, I was like, wow, this is, um, it is, uh, it's cool uh, that they really think about this as like a time capsule that they're keeping for future generations to look back and like, oh yeah, you know, like 50 years ago, uh, that shit, this shit happened in Singapore, and yeah, this is how they dealt with it, lah. Yeah. But how come that's the cynical side of you that made you do it? Because I thought cynical, you're like supposed. To, no, no, I no, thought no. you were going to say, I say, regardless yeah. of race, you know, this 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 document isolates yeah, yeah, race. Yeah. No. So no, as, so, as I'm saying that that the you know I I you came in as a, yeah yeah I came in with a very cynical eye, you know, in the sense that all oh, this is like just gonna pat us, yeah the the Lawrence Wong gonna pat himself on the back for a job well done. But when I read it, then I was like, oh, okay, no, this this makes a lot of sense. And then I started to see, read like deeper into all the points that they were making. And yeah, I was very, very pleasantly surprised at oh, the, uh. how they admitted to these. Uh. And, and oh, one thing that I did find quite funny uh, was that they literally characterized the the fact that they, you know, you know how the, when the vaccines were being developed, right? Mm. Um, actually, Singapore, we managed to jump to the front of the queue to get the vaccines because we pumped a lot of money in. Like, I think we pre-ordered and, and we we chop we chop a lot of the vaccines very early, like, right? And so mm. the in this report, they literally characterize it as uh, I, I quote, I'm quoting uh, verbatim. Uh, Singapore had to yeah. place bets at substantial costs on potential game changers. Uh, no waiting to purchase vaccines only after they were approved to put us way down the queue. Uh, so literally, they are saying that they gambled, you know? And I'm thinking, wow, uh, for them to say that in a white paper, is like National Council of, of Problem Gambling needs to step in and, hey, guys, you know, uh, don't don't promote gambling like that. Like. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> to tell people that, oh, yeah, yeah, we gambled and, and it worked out for us. You know, we made we we made our wins at the, at the table. So, yeah, it's an interesting use of the word uh, bet and gamble there. Like. Mm. Yeah, like, I mean, the thing about, yeah, planning for the future also, I think it's good for a few different things. It's like, okay, like, I know sometimes it can be just lip service, but if you read this, mm. it is quite substantial. But I think why it's good, right, is because, first of all, in the short term, um, this document is going to be debated in Parliament, right? Mm, mm. Um, and I can imagine a lot of interesting things come, coming out of that. But then, if you look 10 years down the road, there's also this document for people to look back on, saying, mm. we plan to do this, and let's say in the worst case, if we don't, what the hell happened? You know, like mm. we already outlined this 10 years ago. Yeah. So yeah. so it's something where, so that's why the, the next thing for me, like the, the true test is like um, what comes out of this. Um, I, I'm i hoping that it's not just something that is just um, uh, lip service. Um, mm. Whatever committees, whatever task force or form, whatever comes out. Yeah, I think, I think we all need to always look back at this document uh, yeah. to... To see like that this shit doesn't happen again, like. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like, the, like one. Yeah. I, I guess one immediate example is like they said that, uh, before the the work the outbreaks at the worker dormitories happened, they actually didn't know shit about how the workers were or where the workers were living. Uh. like they couldn't yeah. trace the workers to which dorm and which room they were in, uh, Which is you think about it is vital information, right? Mm. So. Uh, you would expect that after something like this, there will be regulations that you have to know which room and which which bed or what that all uh, foreign foreign worker dorms how they how they um place all the individuals in there, lah, right? Mm, mm. Yeah, exactly. 
So, so I mean, and I think there have been changes implemented already. Um, I think mm. the the Today article um, interviewed someone uh, who's the uh, co like the who, who runs the the transient workers for two uh, mm-hmm. a tran- transient workers uh, count TWC two, two yeah, trans- yeah. Trans- transient workers count two and yeah, yeah he also highlighted that okay it's good that they talked about all this but the thing is like we cannot forget all the shit that happened la, and there needs to be changes mm. especially in worker dorms where it's not necessarily in the limelight in the public limelight you know in the mainstream consciousness mm. so I would imagine for them also for all the stakeholders involved in maintenance or upkeep of that this is something that that they need to stick to mm. Um, mm. and then going back to, to something else you said um, you pronounce it preface la. Uh, preface. Uh, is it, how do you, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> because uh, when you were saying it, I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Breakfast. I was like, "Oh bre- shit!" Breakfast. Uh, breakfast. Two prata. No, then I was song. thinking, <laughs> how do I pronounce it? I don't think I've ever used uh preface in a word, and I have a feeling I may have said preface before. I think it's okay to say preface. I, I like you. I don't know. You preface something with with what? It's like as a verb and a a noun. You know. You, oh, I think um, you can I would, use it differently. Yeah. Or I would imagine if like I'm on set or something, I need to do makeup. Then there's my preface and my postface. <laughs> <laughs> or on the yeah. bedroom, in the bri- the bedroom, the bedroom like, like your preface before before your climax <laughs> and everything, <laughs> and then your post the your postface like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, yeah. yeah, actually, yeah. we should end end this PDF also with a postface. You have a preface <laughs> and then a postface. Instead of a summary or conclusion, you have a preface and a postface. Why not? Uh, yeah. Postface. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, oh, oh, there, there's another word that, that I think that they use also that also made me sit up and actually uh, ask Google to define it. I think mm. Lawrence Wong in his interviews, he said that, uh, oh yeah, there were not you know, strict, uh, s- there were not certainties that they could take in terms of steps, but there were gradations, gradations in like, uh, in, in, what, in, in what they could do lah. Uh, mm. Basically, in, in simpler language, it's just the the the. I think the like I would say something like it's a spectrum of responses they could have have done to, you know, to to respond to COVID. But he used the word gradations. Mm. Yeah, so I thought that wow, this one is like the scholar the scholar language coming out already for the white paper. He also yeah. said wicked at some point. <laughs> Wicked, oh, like, wicked. Oh, wicked. Mm. wicked wow this wicked. is interesting yeah. oh but one thing that I did notice from Chatter Online uh, as a side mm-hmm. thing is you know when CNA published the articles they actually have mm. two headlines no oh really why yeah yeah one headline is um, the Singapore's COVID-19 vaccine strategy paid off frontline mm. workers brightest spot in crisis response a white paper mm. and then mm. the other one is COVID-19 white paper U-turn on mask confusing measures among areas Singapore say it could have done better and both one article focuses on the positive one article focuses on the negative like I can imagine mm. it's some sort of A-B testing but I just thought that was interesting like, I'm like huh mm. interesting because mm. I can imagine them being shared by very different demographics of people like. mm. Mm. yeah you know the, right. the ready to shit on and the ready to defend uh, yeah. but yeah but, but, you, but I, mean, yeah, I guess yeah. you can't yeah you can't take away from the fact that they did address the stuff that they did wrongly right yeah uh, right. yeah and you know it takes a lot of uh, uh, chutzpa in jungle jimbo's chutzpa uh, chutzpa, uh, chutzpa, to, chutzpa to be able to admit what you did wrong yeah yeah so I mean I'm I'm looking forward to the parliamentary debates I mean parliamentary yeah, yeah, debates but, I mean what, are you expecting there to be be people challenging it or, or, or what that's why you're looking forward to no, it I'm or curious, just I'm, everyone I'm curious, just like, clapping clapping in parliament until, until no, Lawrence Wong cries or something I would imagine there would definitely be challenge some challenges to it uh, mm. I can imagine Trace Together being a hot topic I can imagine the migrant mm. worker yes. uh, dormitories about like yeah. okay what's what's the next step like how can we yeah. prevent this from happening are the yeah. records because one thing that Trace Together when uh, the team admitted in parliament that the mm. data can be used by police. They vowed that everything will be deleted mm. after mm. Uh, the COVID pandemic. La. So yeah, yeah. just some sort of verification whether that has been done and all that. Yeah. That, well, and I all mean, that. yeah, that's that's a, a very good point also about the Trace Together thing. They acknowledge that uh, that the fact that uh, that news came out and it, it shook public confidence, la, right? Mm. In, in the assurances that Trace Together wouldn't be used to to uh, identify who you are and all that. Lah. 
Um, mm. But yeah, it's just uh, quite, quite, I think reading the whole thing was really quite sobering. Because uh, going back to what we said at the very start, everyone, we were all different people like three years ago, right? Um, yeah, man. And, and like our perception of things, uh, our familiarity, familiarity with things like QR codes, masks, uh, you know, like even just thinking about privacy versus like uh, the common good of people, people's health and public health and all that. I think all we've all learned a lot and our perception has changed. And I think one bigger thing is that we all, we all follow politics or at least like some something related to politics a lot more than we did three years ago, like, right? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. I think so. It's quite crazy. I, I think so too, yeah. So, so I mean, interesting. Like, I just thought, oh, okay, here was a pleasant surprise midweek. Mm. Um, yeah, and yeah, like we'll put links to the white paper, to the articles, and if you can, just skim through. La. But mm. just know mm. that it's a mix of portrait and landscape orientations. <laughs> just and know that, okay? Yeah. The, the other thing is also you must, uh, I think it'd be helpful to have a pen and paper next to you. And as you read, and every time an acronym comes up, write down what the acronym means. Because uh. after oh, a yeah, while, yeah. they were going SMM, XBB, you know, everything. And all the acronyms started to like just mess XBB. with my head. Was, isn't it Xiao, there was a XBB variant and all that, right? Wasn't it? Or, oh, or XBB? What, like, something like that, uh, like, yeah. There's there's a X, a, oh, yeah. There's there an XBB, XBB wave. Yeah, XBB like, wave. So there's an SMM, S, XBB and everything. Then after all, the acronyms started to just mess in my head. And I, was this, I was hearing Xiao Mei Mei and all this kind of Xiao, <laughs> Xiao Pao Pei and all that in my head. <laughs> I, I was just distracted already. I couldn't. I couldn't read. I couldn't read much further than that already. Yeah. The Once the acronyms got to me. Wait. Once the acronyms got to me, I just like I, okay. I can't. I just got to skim. I can't like I read see, in see, depth. I see. Yeah. I see. I see. Correct. Correct. Acronyms. Yeah. But but cool, man. Yes. Cool. But oh, yeah. just <laughs> speaking of acronyms, you know, I mentioned the program for research in epidemic preparedness and response. The yeah. acronym is Prepare. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh shit. Brilliant. Prepare. Oh, well, that, cool. That. That is why we pay our scholars what they what they earn, right? Yeah, Come right, on with acronyms yeah. like that. Prepare, yeah. yeah. Sweet. But cool. Okay, cool. But yeah. Cool. cool. Uh, but, you know, speaking of uh, something pleasantly surprising as well. Uh, yeah. I mean, pleasantly surprising, but also sends shivers down people's spines, right? Yeah. Uh, our next thing that we're talking about also is one of those things that is presently surprising, but not everyone's cup of tea as well. What is yeah, that? Yeah, man. <laughs> just reading it is like giving me like, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just the announcement that apparently there's a new cockroach species found in mm. Singapore uh, mm. that has been named after a Pokemon. Yes, a Pokemon character. Yeah. But why? Why is it worth talking about this, Terrence? Um, I think because... It is not only something. Uh, I I I think it's pretty cool that, it, that a whole new species of a of a uh, that that a uh, not a species like a whole new uh, type of species of cockroach, you know, that has probably lived for millions of years, has actually been discovered in our little little uh, very urban urban jungle in Singapore, and yeah. it has been named after a very popular Pokemon character that you know very popular in pop culture. And uh, yeah, it's a cockroach. Uh. It's a cockroach that that you know, like a lot of people hate. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just something quite interesting, uh, You know, whether we should celebrate it or we should be like, uh, should we go and like step on it if we see it in public or what? Yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's just like it, it look the picture is is a cut like a graphical picture. It's not an actual cockroach. But even then, I'm like, because I fucking hate cockroaches. Okay, mm. I would rather mm. be in a room with a hundred lizards than one cockroach. Mm, uh, yeah. just cockroaches so so then <laughs> just reading it I mean uh, it is it, it's just a variation from its nearest cousin from Borneo and you know mm. how they found out about this new species or not? The, oh. the, it was found by analyzing variations between the male genitalia mm. so mm. I mean shout out to all the researchers out there who are not only dealing with cockroaches yeah. but looking at cockroach dicks la, mm-hmm. as a job yeah. yes like yes. Already, like, if I'm 10 meters away from a cockroach, I feel like, Ugh. but to to observe their genitalia, you have to get so close mm. that it just, mm. I I guess, yeah, like, I, I was just surprised that it's that which uh, differentiated it. Yeah. Um, and, 
And I think it started because the, the main author and entomologist at the University of Philippines Los Baos Museum of Natural History in the Philippines were mm. okay, so he came across pictures and mm. um, then he started thinking, hey, that's a bit weird. And then they that kicked off the research into um identifying this line. And I think it was mm. it was gathered during an insect survey in twenty sixteen and twenty seventeen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the name of yeah. the the entomologist from the from the Singapore side is Fu Mao Shen. Mm. So shout out to him. And he said that he was uh he and his co author were fans of Pokemon, so why not name it after a Pokemon inspired by a cockroach, you know? <laughs> I mean that's pretty cool, uh. that, that's yeah, that's yeah, pretty yeah. cool. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. But I mean I I know that Bukit Timah has one of the most biodiverse um flora and fauna in the world. And mm. it just blows my mind. Like, like there's this cockroach, like what you say, has been alive for like millions of years probably. And we mm. only discovered it as a different person now. That's yeah. like saying I grew up Indian all my life, right? Mm-hmm. And then I find out that I'm actually... Uh, actually, no, la, he's still a cockroach. La. So he's just <laughs> a different kind of Indian. La. So uh, like I grew up Sindhi, yes. but then I find out I'm Punjabi. Uh, and then, then what happens there? Eh? I don't know. I'm not so sure what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> no, I, I don't want to say anything, later I get accused of being racist or what. But I'm asking you, no, what, is, so Arish, you what is the hierarchy of of, uh, of the different uh, I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. then I cannot go to like the Sin- Sindhu house or Sindhu Sindhi Association in Singapore. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, yeah. for you, right? Like you are Teochew? Yes, Teochew. Yeah, that's right. So if you grow up your whole life Teochew, yeah. then you find out you are, I don't know, like Han or mm. like... Uh, uh, Hokkien or whatever la, Hokkien, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Would it be life changing or not? Uh, I mean, for me, as a very in 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 local parlance, Jakantang kind of guy who's not super in touch with my ethnic roots, uh, it wouldn't be a huge deal. Mm. Uh, in fact, it'd be quite interesting, lah, right? To to sort of discover that side of yourself. Uh, it's a bit like those you take those DNA those DNA tests, then you discover you are part some other uh, race or what or so, lah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that could be. It is an interesting thought, but it doesn't change who you are as a person, lah, right? It doesn't change who you are as a person, lah, But maybe you might look at yourself another way, lah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, this one. Like, so they did also say, like you mentioned DNA, right? They mm. said, uh, they, yeah, the DNA did not match any species recorded online. So then I don't understand like the genitalia part. Maybe that was the first thing they looked at, lah. And then realized, hey, wait, yeah. Yeah. That looks a bit odd. And then they sent it for a DNA test. Correct, correct. Yeah. And and just as a, as an aside, like I think you and I we, we know someone who who also is an entomologist and, and, and also uh studies bugs and all that, right? Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. what I've heard from him uh first hand I mean not, not first hand, I think what I've heard from him is that yeah, like, they're basically a bunch of uh people who are just obsessed with bugs. Uh. And and they go on these study trips uh, overseas or even in Singapore, Bukit Timah, wherever. And they just hang out in the jungle all day and all night, lah, you know, like literally wow. overnight and just wait for the bugs to appear or something, lah, you know. And and it's a very, very big deal for them when they actually catch or see a bug. And and, and if you are you asking me how they study genitalia, I'm, I'm assuming they catch and then they study, lah, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that's how they stay at it. I don't think they can do that in when they're actually in the jungle. But yeah, just the, the to get to this stage of being able to study the genitalia, it's many, many, many like days or hours or weeks even of like just hanging out in the jungle waiting for waiting to see them. Uh. So kudos to them man. So it's, this is yeah. a big deal. Uh, yeah. I think it's fucking awesome because we have mentioned before that the Lee Kong Chien Natural History Museum is actually mm. a super cool place in Singapore. Mm. And you go there, you realize, oh shit, like there's so much nature in Singapore that we so easily take for granted. Mm. Um and and yeah, just seeing this like like I, I, I know like those enthusiasts, like it just it's so awesome to know that there are those sort of enthusiasts in Singapore because I I mean when I saw this as much as like I'm not a fan of cockroaches, I'm like, hey shit, mm. this is them cool, eh? So, and I can so, imagine amongst that group, yeah, they're yeah. like, Wow, this is awesome. We awesome. we have our like yeah, a cockroach that we kind of like discovered lah. Yeah, I, I think this is a kind of like when they realize the discovery, they run across the Natural History Museum and then they do a zoo, like Ronaldo yeah. kind of thing. That's the level <laughs> of enthusiasm for you. Know? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, uh, but exactly. I, I guess uh, the, the million dollar question I want to ask you is, so next time when you have a cockroach, you see a cockroach in your house or your room or something like that, 
before gonna... you before you try and kill it or what? Are you gonna take a closer look to see if it's the is the what was it called? Noctilus Feromosa, is it? Is that uh, name? Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I will do that. I will <laughs> take it and I'll send you a I'll send you a cockroach dick pic. La. Yeah, check the right. dick pic. <laughs> yeah, 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 correct, correct. The, yeah, the Noctilus. Here's a dick pic of the Noctilus uh, Firmosa, right? Is that, is that what's yeah. called? Noctilus Firmosa. Yeah, 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 exactly. So don't worry, I'll send it to you, Darren. <laughs> I'll send it to you every night, every morning, just to uh, like like uh, hammer it down your throat. La. Yeah, yeah, I know. And, and, and actually, um, yeah, that's the thing about cockroaches, la, right? You know, every, when we think of cockroaches, it's all generally negative thoughts about it. But when you go in the jungle or even if you travel overseas and all, uh, is the cockroaches all look different? Uh? They all, they all different types and all. So yeah, there's this natural actually, diversity in them that's really quite interesting. Uh. Actually, just hearing you say that made me think like I didn't know there are cockroaches in forests. For oh some reason, god. I feel like cockroach. No, okay, oh no. My god. Okay, I know. Let me say. Let me correct. <laughs> okay, before you extrapolate that and never let it go, I know there are cockroaches in forests, but it yeah. never struck me that there are cockroaches in forests because they feel like they've you know like they've migrated from the jungles into oh, a more urban, urban. environment, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. nature, you see all those. You never see like like people take pictures of like. I mean, I guess pictures of cockroaches are never the cool pictures, lah. Mm. Um, but yeah, cockroaches in the forest. My God. No, like cockroach my nudes, uh, cockroach dick pics. Send nudes, yo. That's the, <laughs> that's the new thing. Send nudes. Probably, you never know who you might be able to name it after a Pokemon. <laughs> probably the cockroach is also like, dude, you look at our faces. We are different. Why the fuck you got to look at my dick? <laughs> uh, you got to campaign for cockroach, uh, cockroach privacy cockroach rights. Cockroach harassment. Uh. Uh, yeah, cockroach yeah, yeah. harassment. Yeah, Damn. man. But but that's interesting, lah. It is very cool, interesting. man. You know what's cool, what else cool, is interesting? Cool. What? Uh, one short comments are always super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, super interesting. Right. Yes. So uh, one what short is, comment. What's your one short comment? Uh one my one short comment is um uh from someone who I haven't seen uh comment before, so maybe it's mm. the first comment came just five hours before this recording. It's by George George Sin nineteen eighty one. Uh, and it's just a message. Thank you. I've been listening to your podcast for a while now and I will never fail to be entertained. You guys rock. Just bringing a sometimes fresh take on Talking Points in Singapore. Top top with a sense of humor. You guys rock. If you had a paid subscription, I would gladly pay for it. Keep it up. Mm. Cool, man. Thanks for nice. the thanks for the kind words. And and I mean, just a general shout out. I love that there's more activity on our Reddit now. People are setting mm. up polls. Uh, yeah. People are sharing videos. Fucking great. And, and yeah. memes and shit like that. Uh, and and yeah, like um, like stickers on IG that just got twenty three point six million views by Philly mm. Back Studios. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, keep that shit coming. But yes, Power. that's for me. Uh, mine was uh by Ice underscore Milo, who mm. was responding to our last episode of uh episode three seven three where we talked about the new A level uh, scoring la. So I think Ice Milo he started his comment. It's a very long comment. He started saying. Uh, was mildly intrigued by you guys discussing uh, A-level project work at length. At length. At, at length. What am I saying? At length, a, yeah. A topic that's probably of little concern to most of your listener demographics. So at this point, I thought he was like, he was going to like share on us for like how little we knew about it or or just like, oh, this is so boring while you're talking about it. But he says, guess what? I actually taught project work in JC for the past decade or so. Mm -hmm. And so I hear of his humble thoughts and observations. So, he goes in a lot of detail about uh you know why the spirit and intent of of project work is was good lah, but it it just in his words stuck out like a sore thumb in what a JC education was lah. and mm. you know and you can go on and read a lot of um why he says about it, but I, I thought it was amazing because he's giving us this perspective as a you know someone who heard what we, we what we as older people think about project work and then. He's or he or she's on the ground teaching, uh, having taught it and and really explaining to us what people on the ground feel about it. Lah. So wow, well, these kind of insights, I think you, you can't find them anywhere else, lah, honestly. Like like uh it's only after you, you sort of like you sat through a debate about it and you kinda of have time to think about it, then you like this is why my perspective is also is also uh, a very good addition to the discussion. Lah. So I encourage anyone mm. who listened to our podcast and was intrigued by what the new changes to A levels are. Uh, do 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 read it and see what and understand how a teacher thinks about it. Mm, interesting, yeah. interesting. Oh yeah. yeah, I saw that comment. It was a long comment. Yeah, like um, 
of something like Red Reddit is Reddit feels alive, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and and also just shout out to all those people who give us a rating on Spotify. We've seen mm-hmm. a big jump. So so uh, after our plug in the last podcast, so cheers to yes. that. Yeah. Um, and now one shook thing. What's your one shook thing, man? Uh, my one shook thing is uh actually a YouTube uh video of an exchange on uh Piers Morgan's TV show. Mm. Uh, you know, I think I think Piers Morgan, you know, as a human being, he can be. Uh, I think he's he's very polarizing also, lah. Right? Some people can't mm-hmm. stand him. Some people can stand him. Uh, yeah. And then I think his the biggest coup for him was when he interviewed Ronaldo, lah. Like, right? And that really yeah. put him on the map for like everyone, right? Yeah. Um, but since then, I think because of maybe the Ronaldo videos or what, uh, YouTube has been recommending me some of his videos, and mm. uh, yeah, just something that he uploaded. Uh, a day ago on the Piers Morgan, uh, I think it's called Piers Morgan Uncensored Channel. It's closing in mm. on a million subscribers. Um, it's a video where Piers Morgan talks about gender identity with uh, three women, actually. And mm. and this is in line with International Women's Day. La. And Piers mm. Morgan was basically saying, we should not, we should just suspend International Women's Day until we can define what a woman is. <laughs> so... And and that as well. So the headline of the video is literally, I can identify as a black lesbian. And that's what Piers Morgan go, goes on to do in the video. La. So he he, he oh argues with God. this woman and, and, and yeah, at one point he says that I, I, I now identify as a black lesbian. And what does that mean? La? So um, the, the interesting thing is that it's not, all, it's not women who are all agreeing with him, but it's also, so he has women from both sides of the debate on the, on the show with him. La. And uh, yeah, just hear, hearing him mansplain his way through talking to three women about International Women's Day, uh, yeah, it's not it's not something I I, I imagine is everyone's cup of tea, but uh, it's an interesting debate lah. So do check it out. Mm. And how long is it? Um, just like thirteen minutes. It's, it's oh, just so a segment can, can on the speak show. Speak through it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can speak through it, yeah. But it's it's pretty oh. interesting because yeah lah, it's like one man, three women talking about why International Women's Day is a farce lah, yeah. Oh, because I'm yeah, sure the cool. last last few days, I think on social media, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot. I've seen a lot of posts about International Women's Day, and uh, you know, here's a few people making a point about why it shouldn't be celebrated, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, do check it out and let us know what you think also. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I've seen some people slowly become a bit more like, oh, isn't it on LinkedIn? Like, is it is it weird that you have all these male leaders just posting pictures of their female employees and saying Happy International Women's Day? So I mean, yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's interesting, like, Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. What is your one shot? Cool. Uh, my one shot thing is that um, I found out that yesterday, um, a documentary by this brand called Improv Everywhere, uh, like mm. a full length documentary, they just released it on their YouTube channel, like, And wait, for wait, context, this is, right? This is Improv Everywhere from years ago that yeah that did all those amazing pranks, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So so Improv Everywhere was actually quite influential. Uh, in terms of thinking of pranks to to both Terrence and I, like we used to look at them mm. as what well. these people do some cool shit. So they're basically a a group that came together, I think what fifteen years ago, and they were kind of the pioneers of the viral things in public, like you know the frozen Grand Central Station, mm. uh, where they got like a few hundred people that and took the whole freezing in public the the. The flash mob thing to the to the next level. Mm. Then they had the no pants subway, which was um a one the same day every year where people just went on the subway in the US with no pants. Then they had the MP3 experiment, which they exported mm. around the world. And 2013, they released this documentary on 8th March 2013 as an independent documentary. Uh, but then yesterday they released it online on their YouTube channel, and they're not mm. as active anymore. They're not the sexiest brand anymore, but just a shout out to them for being one of the pioneers like improv oh, everywhere. Geez. So yeah, the, the the documentary is one hour, 25 minutes. Uh, but even if you just go to their channel and check out the stuff they did, right? It was really at that point in time, it was like, whoa, this is some cool shit, man. Mm, this is some mm. cool shit. Yeah, we, I think we, we yeah, a lot of our early pranks and all, we were always referencing improv everywhere and, and what they, how they did it very smartly, like, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, apparently they're 25 years old. Holy shit. Improv wow. everywhere. Yeah, wow. and you look at the videos, they would just, because they had a strong following, they would just decide on a prank um, and then they would do a call out to their fans and then they would meet at New York. Someone briefs them on a loud hailer and then they go and do it. Mm. And it was cool. Like, it was cool. Does it ever make you cool. think, does it ever make you wonder 
like if pranks like that could could be done in Singapore again, like how we used to do. You mean like our kind of pranks or improv everywhere kind of pranks? Uh, the more improv everywhere kind, like the very very big I scale think, ones. I think that one, that one hard lah, because it feels like things will leak, uh, and then people will share why they disagree with this prank. Like mm. no pen subway will be like, oh, what about the other people <laughs> on the subway? <laughs> harassment. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, man. Oh yeah, no pen subway. That would land you in confirm harassment. Yeah. You get cancelled straight away, man. Yeah. You get cancelled. Yeah. So so it feels like hmm. Do no it's a good subway. or bad thing? And then freezing, freezing in the uh, in Grand Central Station, you are literally you become a like a hazard to people, you know, uh, who have who have trouble getting around the station. Yeah, and exactly, like exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wow. so there's a a lot of uh, different things. So yeah, just go check out the channel, and they they really did some interesting shit, lah. They really did some mm. interesting shit. So so just paying homage to them. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, wow, cool, man. Awesome. All right. Well, that was a robust look back at the last three years. Yeah. And remember, just follow us uh, on the Ministry of Funny Instagram for the news on our story. Cool. Sweet. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody.